Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'ah. So, uh, uh, first of all, I hope that uh, all of you had had a nice early morning breakfast, uh, hopefully a healthy one, something that will get you through the day. Uh, we're going to be continuing our series on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the first few names were already covered. So I'll be covering the next uh, set of names, which all come in uh, chapter 59, Surah Al-Hashar, which is um, the 23rd verse uh, in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Huwa Allahu allazhi la ilaha illa hu. That he is Allah, the one whom there is no other God besides him. الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر. It mentions many names of Allah. الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار and المتكبر. And it says سبحان الله عما يشركون. And glorified is Allah above what they ascribe to Him. So the first few names I believe were mentioned yesterday. I will be covering the names Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, and Al-Muhaymin. So the first word, Al-Quddus, is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is mentioned here. This name is probably roughly translated as the Holy One. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is holy in a sense, but I guess maybe that word... Uh, is not that well understood uh, in a post-Christian you know, context. So maybe another way of translating that would be the pure one. And purity is where the word uh, al-Quddus, you know, what it, what it signifies. Signifies purity, which really means freedom from imperfection. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from every single type of imperfection that you can think of. And his attributes are perfect. All right, so this is important to understand. This is like a core principle in Islam. When we understand that every single level of imperfection that could possibly exist in any created thing can never be ascribed to Allah. So there are people who ascribe to Allah different religions. You know, They ascribe that Allah sleeps. Allah created the world and then he rested because he got tired. This is... Subhanallah, as the verse says at the end, Subhanallah amma yushrikun. This is Allah is above and beyond and glorified beyond what people associate with Him. Allah does not need sleep. Allah does not need rest like human beings or like other creatures. Right? That would be a defect. People, people making a claim that Allah is not capable of doing something. People making a claim that Allah has a child. Right. This is a this is a considered to be a defect. Allah is you know doesn't need to procreate. Allah doesn't need a partner. Allah doesn't need all of these different types of things. These are all considered to be defects. Another aspect of being pure or free from imperfection means that the attributes of Allah are perfect. So when Allah is described as Al Alim, the knowledgeable, He doesn't just have a lot of knowledge. His knowledge is perfect. It can never be wrong. His knowledge is complete. It is knowledge of everything. It's knowledge of the general things in the world and all the particular little details in the world. There have been a lot of uh, Greek philosophers and some Muslims were influenced by them as well. They said that Allah only knows the generals. He does not know the particulars. This strange theory negates the idea that Allah is Al-Quddus. Allah is free and perfect and pure from impurities and imperfections and his attributes are perfect as well. They are not limited like the attributes of human beings. Their knowledge may be correct, it may be wrong. Their knowledge will never be complete of everything. So this is the word Al-Quddus. The next is As-Salam. As-Salam means the source of peace. Right? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, the source of peace? He's the one who made everything. He's the one who created everything in the balance that it's in. Now, other people come along and cause the opposite of peace. 
and he has given them a limited free will to do that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate cause of all that. And one of the du'as that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to make, he used to say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Oh Allah, you are the source of peace. Wa minka salam. And from you is the peace. The peace comes from you. You are the causer of all of that. So this being the source of peace has another meaning. As salam has another meaning, and that is soundness. Right? Something when something is salim, it is sound. Right? Sound meaning that it is established, that there's nothing, there's no problem in it. Uh, so that meaning of the word salam also is connected with the word al-Quddus, which means free from imperfections. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from imperfections in that sense. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't need to rest, he doesn't take on children, he doesn't, his power does not get exhausted, uh, his lit knowledge is not limited, uh, his wisdom is complete, everything he does is perfect, etc. etc. The third word is al muhaymin right? And al muhaymin actually means giver of security. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives security to other people, right? Um, actually, sorry, that's, that's uh, al, al, I skipped one. Uh, al mu'min. Uh, al mu'min means the giver of security. And when we use the term mu'min, we usually think believer, right? We think uh, a person is a mu'min, a person is a believer, but that's not, uh, what we're talking about here. So the word mu'min comes from the word amn. Amn means security. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, uh, in a verse that most people have memorized in Surah uh, Al-Quraysh, says, الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ It says, um, He is the one who fed them and protected them from hunger. وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ And and gave them security from fear. Talking about the favor that Allah had for the Quraysh. So from this perspective, we realize that the word mu'min or al-mu'min, when it is being ascribed to Allah, it refers to Allah being the giver of security to people. He is the one who can actually cause real security because you can never be secure of anything. Death can overtake you at any time. Any other affliction can somehow get you. So the giver of security can only be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a secondary meaning to this name as well. It means that someone who fulfills their promises. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always fulfills his promise. Promise for mercy, his promise for justice, his promise for everything. And the last name is al muhaymin al muhaymin means the guardian. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guardian. This word is also used elsewhere in the Quran to refer to the Quran, it's just the word muhaymin itself, not with the al. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the Quran and says, we've sent down the book, bil haqqi, in truth, musaddiqan lima bayna yadayh min al-kitab, uh, confirming what, it has, what has come before it of the books, meaning the previous books, wa muhaymanan alayh and a guardian over it, meaning the Quran is a guardian over the previous scriptures. So in this sense, this word has been used, it's been clarified, but when it's ascribed to Allah, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guardian over all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches over all his creatures. Allah is responsible for the care and the upkeep and, and of all creatures. And He he's the one who takes care of all of that. So this is just a, a brief, Summary of these four names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, and Al-Muhaymin. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting, to make our fast easy for us. And we ask Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin for us to understand his beautiful names and to be able to benefit from utilizing them and that understanding. I mean, subhanakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.